exchange with noble tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Come, Mary, from grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <coughs> Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto thee according to thy word. Come, Mary, from grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. O Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. All forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua e bona tari, Amen. In tua e bona tari, Amen. In tua e bona tari, Amen. Io li camere, se li scena cosa mem de gente non santa, ben omen e nene quando lo so, do e me. Que tu est eus fruti tu cumae, cor ne culisi cor e tristis in cielo, cum e frigi me, nemicus. Emite lucem tu me veritatem, tu unghissi me deduc senum, tu deduc senum, ti monsum santum forme, te tabanaca la tua. E iti in troi volatari de, in de inquilititi te aggiunto tu cum erum. Confite tu ti vincitera, Deus, Deus meus, cor e tristis anima meat, cor e contubas me. Sfere in deo cuore me ad hoc confite tu ini, salutari vultus me, e Deus meus. Gloria a Patri e Figlio, Spedito e Santo, sicu derati in principio e non che sempre, ed in secula seculorum amen. In troi volatari dei, ed è in finitivita di uventuto mari. Auditorium nostrum in nomine domini, qui figi cielo me terra. Confidio da mi potente, via della mia sedimine, via della mia terra, in nome di Dio, 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 Quei che capi di discostazione devo evocare, me ho culpa, me ho culpa, me ho massima culpa. E devo prego, beata Maria, se mi dice, mi viate mutare ma canto, non viate, mi guarda a chi sta, mi sento se posso aspetto, mi fanno. E io mi guarda Maria, mi viate, non mi sento se posso aspetto, vorrò di tua me donna, mi dono così. Mi insegna a tutti, mi potete dire, mi sono rischiatati, mi sono rischiatati, mi dite, mi sento, mi fanno. Confiti io, Deo, Onnipotente, beate Maria, sempre più di me, Priato di Cario Arcangelo, Priato di Uani Battiste, Santi Sofossili Spettro e Paolo, Omnibus Santi Sediti Pate, Qui è peccato in Ivi, Stogita e Sione, Vembo e Popole, Mea Culpa, Mea Culpa, Mea Maxima Culpa, Ideo Greco Beata, Maria, Sempre Virgine, Beato Macano Arcangelo, Beato di Uani Battista, Santo Sofossili Spettro e Paolo, Omne Santo Sente Pater, orare con me, ad Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseriato, Vesti Unipotens Deus, et Mistretatis Vesti Spedute, et Vosse Vita Metanam. Amen. Ene Lugen, Siam Sussionem, et Remissionem, et Ecuador, Nostorum, Tribua, et Nobis Unipotente, Misericus Dominus. Amen. Deus de Converse Spetificatis Nos, et et Vesti Turne Tabitur in Te, Ostendi Nobis Domine, Misericordiam Tua, Et salutare tu in nobis, Domine exaudi razione meo, et clamo meo sette venia, Dominus obiscum, et cum spiritum tuo, ordenus. Gaude amus omnes in Domino, Dium festum celebrante, sub honorde beate, Agate, Beginis et Martiris, Recurus passione gaudat angeli, Et calaudant filium dei, Eruptavit cor meum verbum bonum, Dico ego opera mea regi. Gloria, Patria, Filio, et Spiritu, et Santo, Sicuderat in principio, et nunc et sempre, Et in secula seculorum ane. Gaude amus omnes in Domino, Dium festum celebrante, Sub honore beate, Agate, Beginis et Martiris, De cuius passione gaudat angeli, Et calaudant filium dei. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Chris eleison, 
Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gracias agimus divi propter magnum gloriam tuam. Domine Deus, ex celestis, Deus Pater omnipotens, Domine Fili unigenite, Iesu Christe. Domine Deus, Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccatum mundi, miserere nobis. Qui tolis peccatum mundi, suscite deprecationem nostram. Qui sedes et exteram patris, miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe. Con Santo Spirito e Gloria dei Patris. Amen. Ex vobis e con Spirito tuo. Ordeus. Deus, qui intercetera potenzia tue miracula etiam in sensu fragili victoriam, matini contuisti, concede propitius, Ut qui beate agate regines et martiris tui natelitia colimus, ereus a te exempla gaudi amor. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesu Christum, Filium tu, qui te conclivita regna a dominitati Spiritus Santi Deus, per omnia secula seculo omni. Amen. Lex Epistoli Piazzi Pauli Apostoli et Corinthios. Frates, Videte vocationem vestam, qui a non multi sapiente secundum carnem, non multi potentes, non multi nobiles. Sed que suta, stuta sunt mundi eligi Deus, et confundat sapientes, et infirma mundi eligi Deus, ut confundat forzia, et in nobilia mundi et contemptibilia eligi de Deus, et ea que non sunt, ut ea que sunt destruere ut non gloriatur omnis carum e conspectu eus. Ex ipso autimus esis in Christo Iesu, qui factus es nobis sapientia a Deo et justitia et sanctificatio et redemptio, ut quem magmodum scriptum est, qui gloriatur in Domino gloriatur. Deo gracias. Aiuvabit eam Deus votus u, Deus in medio eus, non como vegitur, Luminis impetus, letifica civitatem Dei, sanctificavit abonaculum suum altissimus. Qui seminat in lacrimis in gaudium etem, Dei untes ibante flebant mitentes semina sua, venientes autem venient cum exultazione portantes manipulus suus. Dominus Fotiscum, et con Spirito Tu, sequentia Santi Vangeli secundum Matteo, Gloria Tibi Domine. In illo tempore, accessero ad Iesu parisse e tentantes Deo medicentes, si licit homini dimitere in suo ordem suam qua comunque ex causa, qui respondens ei deis, non legistis qui a que fecit hominem ad inizio masculum et feminam peci Deus, e dixi, Prote hoc limitit homum patre haec matrem, et ad eribit ut sorti sue, et erunt due in cane uno. Ita atque iam non sum duo, sed uno cano. Quod ergo Deus conluxit homo son non separe, dicunt vii, ut ergo Moisis mandavit a redig libellum recudi et dimitere, e dis, quoli a Moisis et uitsiam cortis vestri per misit vobis dimitere usores vestras, Am inizio autem non fuit si, dico autem vobis, quia que cumque dimissere ut sorrem suam, nisi o fornicationem, et aliam duxerit, moecartur, et qui dimissam duxerit, moecartur. Dico de discipli eus, si iteres causa hominis comuxore non expedit nubere, quedisit ilis, 
No nom nie jest hakapium verbum misu, sed vivus datum est. Sunt eine meio loci, qui temati sunt consignati sunt, et sunt e loci, qui fati sunt abon minibus, et sunt un loci, qui si ipsus castraverum propria regum cedorum, qui potestabre capiat. Laus tibi Christi. So the lesson today is from the Epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brethren, ye see your calling, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And the Gospel today is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At that time the Pharisees came unto Jesus, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, is it not good to marry? But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they do whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. How merry for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass. On this, the feast of St. Agatha, Virgin and Martyr of Sicily, one of the four uh, great uh, uh, mar Virgin Martyrs celebrated uh, long in the Latin Church. I'm going to uh, read uh, this uh, information about St. Agatha from uh, Father Pius Pasch's uh, very good book uh, on the uh, seasonal liturgies as uh, I don't think I could better uh, his description. So St. Agatha is the last of the four great virgin martyrs of the Roman Church whose names occur in the canon and whose feasts are celebrated month by month during the winter. The four are Cecilia in November, the patroness of music, Lucy, the Shining One, in December, heralding the light of Christmas, Agnes, the Pure, in January, whom we commemorated last week, and Agatha, whose name means the Good, in February. The latter's martyrdom probably took place during the Dacian persecutions, so around 254 AD. She enjoyed wide veneration in ancient times. It is impossible to write an historically reliable account of St. Agatha's life, the acts of her martyrdom are legendary, dating from the 6th century. From these acts, much is culled for use in the breviary today, particularly antiphons and responsories. As prayers in the divine office, these texts are not without a certain spiritual value. According to these sources, Agatha was a Sicilian virgin of noble extraction. Quintianus, governor of Sicily, became deeply enamoured of her, but she rejected his advances. As a result, she was charged with being a Christian and brought before his tribunal. To the question concerning her origin, she replied, and this is from the Antiphon at Matins today, 
I am noble born of a distinguished family, as all my relatives will attest. When asked why she lived the servile life of a Christian, she answered, I am a handmaid of Christ, and that is why I bear the outward appearance of a slave. Yet this is the highest nobility, to be a slave to Christ. And this is of the second and third antiphons of Matins today. The governor threatened her with the most dreadful tortures if she did not renounce Christ. Agatha countered, If you threaten me with wild beasts, know that at the name of Christ they grow tame. If you use fire, from heaven angels will drop healing dew on me. After being tortured, Agatha went to prison radiant with joy and with head held high as though invited to a festive banquet, and she commended her agony to the Lord in prayer. The next day, as she again stood before the judge, she declared, If you do not cause my body to be torn to pieces by the hangmen, my soul cannot enter the Lord's paradise with the martyrs. She was then stretched on the rack, burned with red-hot irons and despoiled of her breasts. During these tortures, she prayed, For love of chastity I am made to hang from a rack. Help me, O Lord my God, as they knife my breasts. Agatha rebuked the governor for his barbarity. Godless, cruel, infamous tyrant, are you not ashamed to despoil a woman of that by which your own mother nursed you? Returning to prison, she prayed, You have seen, O Lord, my struggle, how I fought in the place of combat, but because I would not obey the commands of rulers, my breasts were lacerated. In the night there appeared to her a venerable old man, the Apostle Peter, with healing remedies. Agatha, ever delicately modest, hesitated to show him her wounds. I am the Apostle of Christ. Distrust me not, my daughter, he said. To which she replied, I have never used earthly medicines on my body. I cling to the Lord Jesus Christ, who renews all things by his word. She was miraculously healed by St. Peter. Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, I give you praise, because by your Apostle you have restored my breasts. Throughout the night, a light illumined the dungeon. When the guards fled in terror, her fellow prisoners urged her to escape, but she refused. Having received help from the Lord, I will persevere in confessing him who healed me and comforted me. Four days later, she was again led before the judge. He, of course, was amazed over her cure. Nevertheless, he insisted that she worship the gods, which prompted another confession of faith in Christ. Then, by order of the governor, Agatha was rolled over pieces of sharp glass and burning coals. At that moment, the whole city was rocked by a violent earthquake. Two walls collapsed, burying two of the governor's friends in the debris. Fearing a popular uprising, he ordered Agatha, half dead, to be returned to prison. Here she offered her dying prayer. Blessed Agatha stood in the midst of the prison and with outstretched arms prayed to the Lord, O Lord Jesus Christ, good master, I give you thanks that you granted me victory over the executioner's tortures. Grant now that I may happily dwell in your never-ending glory. Thereupon she died. A year after her death, the city of Catania was in great peril from an eruption on Mount Etna. Pagans, too, were numbered among those who fled in terror to the saint's grave. Her veil was taken and held against the onrushing flames, and suddenly the danger ceased. The Benedictus Antiphon describes the incident. The pagan multitude fled to the saint's grave and held her veil against the fire. Thus did the Lord show that they were saved from the fire's danger by the merits of the holy martyr Agatha. Her mm -hmm. grave is still venerated to this day at Catania in Sicily. In the Gospel today, Christ speaks of virginity for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Agatha was able to take it and as proof shed her blood. The gradual today shows us the virgin in combat with the surging torrents of suffering from which she proceeds, joyful and triumphant. While receiving Holy Communion, we the faithful pray words first spoken by that saint. He who deigned to heal my every wound and to restore my breasts him I invoke as the living God. There, yeah, beautiful account of uh, Agatha's martyrdom. And those were 
uh, variously the quotations, uh, antiphons and verses from uh, the prayer of the church today. There is much of course in the example of St Agatha for us to take, not least of all her joyfulness and her radiance at the prospect of heaven. We've often reflected before and very recently about the prospect of heaven and how we as Christians should be looking forward to heaven. It is after all the source and summit of our Christian life, to be in love and in union with God for all eternity. It is for this reason, as we've reflected already, that in Jessima we are beginning to look at our spiritual condition so that we can improve and develop in holiness to make ourselves worthy of that great prize of eternal life with Christ. We see in the examples of the lives of the saints and particularly of the martyrs that particular striving after holiness. We see particularly in the example of virgin martyrs and we see in the words of Christ in today's gospel not just concerning the sacrament of matrimony uh, which he is uh, definitely uh, defining and not just uh, with the regard to uh, the highest principle uh, for which marriage was created for man and woman to become one flesh but also too he speaks to us of that equally high calling of those who are not called to marriage but who are yet called to be chaste for the sake of the kingdom of heaven there is of course much debate uh, topical debate in the present time about the nature of marriage and about uh, alternative lifestyles and yet we see clearly in the scriptures that sexual intimacy is reserved primarily for procreation and, prior and secondarily uh, to cement the union of husband and wife. All those who are unmarried irrespective of their sexuality as Christians are called to chastity and should strive like St Agatha and like various examples of the saints to make of themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and it's very important I think in the uh, very polarized discussions uh, and debates that go on, especially on uh, social media, for us as Christians to make the point, not just about that definition of what marriage is uh, as uh, explained by Christ himself, who is God, the Word made flesh, but also to make the point that the call to chastity is for everybody else. And that call for chastity includes those who are betrothed uh, to be married. All too often we hear excuses uh, which sound uh, wise about uh, how perhaps uh, couples should know each other properly before uh, they enter into uh, marriage. And we see how the destruction of marriage uh, has befallen our society by this pervasive permissiveness so that the majority of couples these days uh, are not married irrespective of whether there are children the majority of couples these days are to use an arcane phrase living in sin meaning of course that they're not living in chastity now in many respects for us as contemporary Christians uh, the morality of that of that sort of situation is not necessarily for us to comment upon where it does not involve people who otherwise would count themselves as confessing Christ. But those who do confess Christ, those who claim to be Christians, ought not to be living in such scenarios. And it is possible 
to talk about these things without naming names or necessarily uh, speaking directly to anybody in particular. But simply by our conversation we can reiterate our Lord's own teaching, which same teaching, that single deposit of the faith once delivered to the saints, was given to the apostles, who each in their turn, in the epistles and the New Testament, similarly commend those outside of marriage to a life of chastity for the sake of the kingdom. The other thing in, important to remember as well that for those who have fallen by the wayside on that score, that that doesn't mean to say that they can't start again, that they cannot be healed and restored and forgiven. After all, none of us are perfect, only he, our Lord, was perfect. But his grace and his mercy is freely available to those with humble and contrite hearts who will seek to try to live that highest calling, that commandment to love, to live in love and in union with God, which as we've reflected before is not about uh, that fuzzy, warm sort of niceness uh, of love for God, not about necessarily being good, but about sacrificially living in love with God. And it does help, my brothers and sisters, for us, and please take this to uh, use to uh, help your reflections in Jessima, and particularly perhaps uh, to uh, heal and restore uh, your progress in holiness during Lent. But remember that charity, which is the word used for love in Scripture, means sacrificial love. And whenever we as Christians talk about love in the sense of talking about God's love, we must ourselves be clear to explain to others that it means sacrifice, it means sacrificial. And as we've said before, those of us uh, who have been in love with someone, those of us who have been betrothed and become married, know uh, and live it every day and reminded constantly that the maintenance of that relationship is about sacrifice, about sacrificing for one another. It's how couples uh, become couples. It's through that sacrifice of compromise. It's through that sacrifice of care and understanding. But that same kind of sacrificial love is how all of us as Christians, married or not, should be living in regards to our relationship with God, sacrificing uh, our uh, passions and lusts for the sake of the kingdom, but also too sacrificing, living sacrificially for each other within the family of the church, giving uh, what needs to be given to those uh, who need it if we have it to give, sharing, not just being nice, but sacrificially sharing. And of course, by extension, outside of the church too. For remember, it is our Lord who says, uh, the world will recognize you as my disciples if you have love one for another. If our church families were living sacrificially in love with each other and for each other and for God, others outside would see it, and they too would be drawn towards it. And our best tool for evangelism is to sacrificially live in love for others, to demonstrate that sacrificial giving for others. That giving which gives of itself without seeking reward, without seeking return. Because that is the nature of love, of charity that unites the Holy Trinity and who by extension desire to live such with us. And those who strive to live that and realize and manifest that in this life will come to realize it with the Blessed Trinity in the life to come with him who is God, Father, Son and Holy Ghost.
Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spiritu Tuo. Ordemus. Afferentur regi veginis posteram, proxime ius afferentur tibi. secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, susum porta, cadevum sant dominum, gracias a tamus domino Deo nostro, in nome diustum est, bene, in nome diustum et ecco me salutare, nos di sempre le dubbe, gracias angele, domine sante patero, nipotens et tene Deus, et Christum dominum nostro. Vergo e mensatem, tuo laudem angeli, adorante dominazione, estremo e potestatens, genice o rumpe e vetutes, viate serafim, soci in sottazione con cerebra. Concluimus in nostres voce, esultemiti u veste e prefamur, supplici confessione di cerebra. Sancus, 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 Dominus Deus Adeo, Leni sum geli a terra, gloria tua, osana in excelsis. Benedicus tui veri in nomine domini, osana in excelsis.
pessoa que pega teu ônibus. Peronia secula seculor. Amen. Ordemus. Recepti salutari cos monici e divina seduzione formati. Ordemus dice. Mate noster qui es in cielis sancti vicetum non tum. Veni ad regnum tum fiet voluntas tua. Sicu cum cielo eit in terra. Panem nostrum quadriando nobis ordine. Et imite nobis debita nostra. Sicu de nostri mitimus debitoribus nostris. Et menos in lucas in tentazione. Sempre para nossa mãe. Era minha secula secula. Amém. Aqui o ministro sempre do obispo. Ecce omnius Dei, ecce qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine non sentitus, ut in tre subtectum mea, set tantum dic verbo, et senabitum anima mea. Domine non sentitus, ut in tre subtectum mea, set tantum dic verbo, et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sentitus, Ut in tre subtectum mea, sed tantum de verbo, et senabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion, the words for which you will find below your viewing screen. 
My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee, and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Qui me dignatus est ab omni plaga curare at omnira me meo pectori vestitulere, ipsum invoco deum ar vivo.
Dominus obiscum et cum spiritu tu. Ordemus. Aux liantur nobis domine sunta misteria, et in decedente beata agata virginia et materia tua, sempiterna protezione confiata. Per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tu, qui te cum vivita regno ad unitate spiritus sancti deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spiritu tu, ite misa est, Deo gratias. In nomen Domini benedictum, ex hoc nunca dusque in secula, au cultorum nostrum in nomen e Domini, qui feci celum et terra, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pate et filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen. In Domino soviscum, et con spirito tuo, inizio sancti vangeli, secundum Giovanni. Gloria a te, Dei Domini. In principio ora et verbum, et verbum ed et apu Deum, et Deus ed et verbum, hocerat in principio apu Deum, omnia per ipsum factus sum, si simso factum est nini, unco factum est. In ipsum vita erat, e vita erat, lux amum, et lux entene per sum, cet et tene per eam non comprehendere. Fui tomo nisus reo per nomen erat Giovannes, in veriti testimoni, mo testimoni di vere tu nini, neo tonnes credere un primo. Non eret ille lux, ero testimoni di vere tu nini, ero et lux vere qua illuminat omnem, hominem, veniente mi confondo. In mundo erato, monus rissum factus est, monus et non cognomi. In propria verite sum non recepere. Quar quod autem recepere un tem, de edere espolestate, filios e fieris, qui prendi nomine eus. Qui non est sanguinibus, eco soltati panis, eco soltati vivis, et leonati se. Et verbum arro factum est, et habitabile nobis e vinimus e gloria meus, gloria in quasi unigenite e parte, non grazia e veritatis. Deo gracias. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. We did not presume to come to this thy table and mercy of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thine manifold and great mercies. We went worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Thou granted us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood. Wherefore, Heavenly Father, we thank thee for feeding us with the same, and offer unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy Spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. We make this our prayer through the same, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the divine assistance remain with us always. May the souls of the faithful departed from the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Virgin, Saint Agatha, Pray, pray for, for us. us. May our heavenly patrons, Saints Catherine and Wilfrid, pray, pray for us. May Saint Louina, Virgin Martyr of Sussex, pray, pray for us. And may Our Lady <coughs> Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray, pray for, for us. us.